So much like you, like 10 years ago, I have never been involved in planning a house church. I don't know what that looks like or means. Like, And so what I'd really like to hear, and some people might find this boring, but I'm just fascinated by it, <laughs> yeah. is like logistically, logistically, like how do you set out about planning a church? What kind of resources do you need to get in place? What kind of people do you need to get in place? And like, what yeah. is that first, like what goes into like making that first weekend happen? Yeah, no, that's good, man. Um, yeah, so so what we, we try to, uh, to do is, is one, we want to view the church ultimately as a family, not as an event. Um, and so when we're planting churches, hmm. we really want to make sure that we're not planting services. Um, I think, I think anyone wow, can yeah. plant a, a service or an event. Um, but, but that's not the, the, the commission that we see in, in, in acts ultimately, um, it's to plant healthy families. And so in that sense, you don't need much. You just need a couple of people who, you know, want to, want to follow Jesus and, and so for us, the way our, our story, you know, and our story is different from, from everybody else's and, um, and similar, you know, we borrowed from as many people as we could to learn, you know, we didn't do this thing on our own, but um, really for us, when, when we were in San Diego and then moved up here, um, one, again, we're submitted to the eldership team. We think churches should plant churches, um, not just like random people just, you know, declare their independence and plant. Uh, so we were sent out of Restored Uptown, um, and and yeah. what that means to be sent out is is one um, relationally that, that they're con- they're committed to us, right? So they're they're down to help us uh, no matter what we need, um, and committed yeah. financially. You know, they sent us forty thousand dollars just to kind of get the ball yeah. rolling before um, you know that we we would begin fundraising and all that kind of stuff, but. Um, yeah, our ultimate desire was to plant a healthy church family. And so when we came up back up to the valley, um, three people from San Diego moved up with us. Um, and oh, by wow. God's by God's grace, they weren't just three random people. Um, they were three of the, the, the best leaders San Diego had. And so we kind of stole them um, and, yeah. and, and pr- prayed that Jesus would give them to us. And so that was uh, such a gift to be able to have them join us and, um, yeah. And just really have them help us in laying a foundation. And ultimately, it came down to giftings. Like Sarah and I knew we don't have all the gifts, so we're not going to pretend to plant a church based on just our gifts. Um, and so one of the couples, Paul and Nicole, um, just gifted shepherds and, and so gifted in hospitality and helped lay a, a foundation of, of what it looks like to be a church that that is rooted relationally and in the home. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, we, we came up here and, you know, we knew people because this is both where Sarah and I grew up. And so, you know, we... we had some idea of a few people that might want to join the original team, but um, we weren't looking for like a specific number, but uh, we ended up with like 25 people kind of in our living room, casting vision. Here's what we're planning on doing. Here's what we're looking at. And I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a wild crew. I mean, I, half the people weren't saved and um, you know, the other half wow. weren't sure where they were at. And so it definitely <laughs> wasn't the most glamorous, especially being a part of such a healthy church in San Diego. It was like, Oh man, yeah. like maybe we should go back. Like this is just, this is going to be hard. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we started doing meetings on Wednesday nights, kind of our gospel communities and then Sunday mornings in our backyard. Um, you know, we were, I guess we were the pre COVID, we, we saw it coming, but we were doing backyard gatherings, um, and, and just kind of hanging out. I I mean, it was, it was definitely not sexy, uh, but it was, it was beautiful (laughs) to watch Jesus just start saving people. Um, people, you know, that, that. I think I had this vision that Jesus was going to start saving um, a ton of friends and family that I knew. Um, and, and unfortunately, that hasn't really been the case. But he saved so mm-hmm. many other people that, that we never knew. And it was like, OK, like yeah. this is this is why he called us back. And so to see some of those men and women who got saved in our church family um, now leading in our church is just like such a gift and, and such a beautiful reminder of, of Jesus calling to us. So, yeah, started in small groups and homes. And then we had like kind of a launch Sunday, if you will, just like, hey, we're, yeah. we're officially going to be public. You know, people were like, hey, can I invite my friends and coworkers and stuff? And we're like, yeah, just wait, wait until this one Sunday. And so, you know, we started renting yeah. a building and then that's when we kind of did like our official launch, if you will. But we weren't yeah. launching to kind of get like, hey, now we're going to officially become a church. At that point, we were six right. to eight, eight months old and going, hey, we're actually welcoming you into the church. Um, that that the yeah. service is, is a gift. We love Sunday gatherings, but... Um, it's the church is far more than, than just a Sunday. So yeah, our, our, our desire is to be planting those healthy church communities. Um, and then yeah, services and gatherings all flow from that. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned the words like sent out, like you were being sent out from the church in San Diego and it just feels so reminiscent of the early church and kind of like what God's vision for the church was. And (laughs) I just, I, I love the, I love the way it sounded. It just, it, it really sounds, um, like the way it's supposed to be done. 